As parents today, we all want to do everything we can to keep our kids safe and healthy. And inherent in that discussion of keeping kids healthy means directing our attention to teaching our kids some healthy eating habits. Now, I'm Dr. Laura Jana, and I'm a pediatrician and co-author of a book, Food Fights. And I'm also the mother of three who now are long out of their high chair years, but I am as convinced as I was back when my three kids spent time in a high chair that it's really important to focus your parental attention on teaching kids some healthy eating habits. I'm very honored today to join Durrell Juvenile Group and the Safety First Brain in bringing you a few practical tips to accomplish that important goal. First, make sure you start and, and commit to it early. And by early, I mean right from the day you bring your baby home from the hospital. If you've decided to breastfeed, more power to you. We know it's one of the single best things you can do to help your child both be healthy from a nutrition standpoint and from preventing colds and ear infections and all sorts of other things. For all babies, whether you're breast or bottle feeding, be sure that you learn to recognize your baby's cues for hunger. Recognize them early so they don't have to start really crying hard before you choose to feed them. But at the same time, also start paying attention when it is that your baby's not hungry and honor those cues as well. If your baby is pulling away from the breast or pushing away a bottle, is very disinterested in feeding, certainly check with your pediatrician to make sure your baby's gaining and growing and, and doing all the things they're supposed to be doing. But also recognize that very early on, you want to maintain that sense of your baby knowing when they're hungry or thirsty and when they're not. Also looking ahead, I find a lot of parents have difficulty weaning the bottle and the bottle can get to be a significant problem for toddlers and older children who don't want to give it up. Food or drinking becomes a habit rather than a nutritional necessity. So I always encourage parents to introduce cups early. And by early, I mean as early as six to nine months. We know that babies can start to learn to drink out of a cup. And by 12 to 15 months, weaning them from a bottle and letting them get all their liquids, either from breastfeeding if you're continuing to do so, and or from a cup, is a very healthy approach. I also like to make sure that as we're talking about getting kids um, on the track to healthy nutrition that you talk about healthy exposures. And by exposures, I mean exposing them to wide ranges of healthy foods and always keeping safety in mind. When it comes to exposures, do realize that we know that young children can take as many as 10 to 15 exposures to a new food before they learn to like it or accept it. Don't get frustrated if one or two times you're met with a refusal about a new food. Just keep exposing your baby or your toddler to new foods. And those who are exposed more frequently to a wider range of foods between nine months and the middle of the first year are the same children who have a much wider food acceptance as they get older. One of the tricks I found is what I call a no thank you bite, which for toddlers and older preschoolers, for example, um, works very well. You want The goal you should have is to put good food in front of your child and it's their job to decide whether or not to taste it or to eat it. Um, if you give them the option of a no thank you bite, they can say, I simply want to take one bite and then no thank you, I don't want any. You accomplish your goal of a stress-free exposure to new foods and your child retains some important control and doesn't develop unhealthy aversions to the foods that we know are healthy for them. Also, in terms of creating a healthy environment and exposing your child to healthy foods, make sure that the setting that you do it in is really very conducive for an enjoyable experience. One of the most important things I can tell you, whether you're the parent of a newborn or of a teenager, is to keep it stress-free. Family-style meals and the family dinner table is a really important place to make sure that you and your family share fun and warm experiences and not fight battles. When it comes to sitting your baby in a high chair for first foods, I can tell you they sure didn't make high chairs like the one that Safety First has generously let me use to make it an easier and safer experience, but you'll find that there are all sorts of features, whether it's the easy to clean tray or safe buckle that keeps your child strapped in safely that takes some of that stress out of the feeding experience. And also, you can take some of the stress out by reminding yourself that feeding for a new baby, solid foods, is a learning experience. 
Nobody I know likes to learn new things when they're tired, hungry, frustrated, angry. And that's true of both you and your baby. So make sure you're both up for the experience as you set out to introduce solid foods. If your baby wants to be an active participant, get extra rubber tipped spoons and let your baby hold a couple of them while you are then feeding your baby and actually getting the food into their mouth before they're able. Again, play with it and have fun, but also recognize just how important all those practical things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis are to ensuring your child's future and healthy nutrition. Again, I'm Dr. Laura Jana. It's been a pleasure joining you for uh, Safety First and Gerald Juveniles Group's practical tips. Um, if you'd like to find more, you are welcome to go to the Safety First web, uh, website or Facebook page, and I look forward to sharing more tips with you. Take care.